And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed. To you it shall be for food. Genesis 129. Man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to the full. Psalm 78, 25. Everyday Manna with Lisa. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Everyday Manna. Today, we are going to make one of my favorite things to eat. And that is spaghetti with meatballs. Then we're going to have some apple enchiladas to go on the side and a crispy onion filled croissant. We're going to get started right now. Now, I have my oven preheated to 375 degrees and at the grocery store in the meat section, they sell fresh, not frozen, but fresh meatballs. They, my store had like three or four different kinds. I'm going to cheat today because this is meant to be like a quick, easy, everyday, you know, five o'clock, what's for dinner kind of meal. I'm going to just, I bought one package. There's 12 meatballs. This particular one is the spicy Italian blend. And I've just got them on a lined baking sheet. I'm going to bake these. Cuts down a little bit on the fat. Now, I did line my baking sheet. I sprayed my little uh, tray and also sprayed the tops of the meatballs because I want them to cook. Now, we're just going to put these in the oven and let them be baking while we work on the enchiladas. So I'm going to let these bake in the oven. They'll bake in about 20, 25 minutes or so. And we'll get started on the sauce in just a minute. But we're also going to make some enchiladas, apple enchiladas. Now, in this dish, I have a little bit of water and some butter that I'm going to melt. I'm also going to add some brown sugar to that. We're going to make like a little glaze, a little caramelized glaze to go on top of our enchiladas. That just needs to come up to a simmer. I have some flour tortillas and all I did was soften them just a little bit. I, I dampened a towel and I put the tortillas in there and I microwaved them for just a couple of minutes because I'm using a lot. What that does is that just kind of softens them a little bit, makes them a little bit easier to work with. In this bowl, I have one can of apple pie filling, and I'm going to add in just a little bit of cinnamon, and actually I'm going to add in just a pinch of salt, because I think you need a, just a pinch of salt in your baked goods. Sweets need that too. Just stirring that cinnamon in. If you want to use nutmeg or apple pie spice or pumpkin pie spice or anything like that, feel free. Now, I have a baking dish here that I have sprayed with non-stick spray, and I'm going to take my enchilada, or my, excuse me, my flour tortillas. I'm going to line them up four in a row. I'm going to take a little bit of that apple pie filling, and I'm going to put it in each one in the center. Show you how we do a couple of these. This couldn't be simpler. Now, you could do this with any kind of pie filling that you wanted. They sell blueberry. They sell all kinds of different pie fillings. You could use whatever kind you want. This is more of a, a method here. I just want to show you how you can. And then roll up your enchiladas and place them seam side down in your baking dish. I'm coming up to a simmer here. I also have a pot of water that has come up to a boil for our spaghetti. So let me turn that down just a little bit. So I'm not quite ready for that. Let's stir our sauce. You want to bring that up to a boil, but once it comes up to a boil, you need to watch it very, very closely. Let's put a couple more in this dish. I think I got room for maybe two more in here. Maybe three. I can squeeze them together. Okay, roll it up. 
Mm -hmm. It's okay if a little bit comes out. It's not a problem. Yeah, I can do one more. And then I'll save these for something else. You could also cut those into triangles and bake them with a little cinnamon and they get crispy. And that would be a good little side dish for this. I might as well use it up. This one will be extra full. Nobody's gonna mind. Okay, seam side down. All right, let's let this come up to a boil, which it has. Okay. Let me get a whisk. Now, what you're going to do is let this come to a boil, and then you're going to let it reduce just a little bit. What's going to happen is the water and the water from the butter is going to evaporate a little bit leaving the solids of the butter to mix with that brown sugar. And you're almost making a caramelized glaze. If you wanted to add some caramel to this, some sea salt caramel, ice cream topping would be really good mixed into this. Feel free to do that. The brown sugar and the water are going to form um, a, a really hot, almost like a brittle glaze type thing. So be very, very careful with this. It's extremely hot because that's what we're wanting to do is form like a little glaze. We're going to let that go for just a minute here. Put this in the sink. I absolutely love using ingredients that aren't necessarily marketed, like tortillas, toward a dessert. But, oh, it makes such a good dessert, such a good dessert. I would warm them first, though, because it does make them a little more pliable. Be careful with this because it can boil over. That's why you really, really have to watch it. I'm just trying to show you this in real time so you can see. Let it go for about a minute more, and then we'll pour it over that, and then we'll stick it in the oven and bake it, and it will be so, so good. We're just making basically a homemade caramel is what we're doing. Let's see how we're doing. I think that's probably good. Now, be careful with your pot, could be hot. Take your glaze, be careful, and just pour that. This won't be thick, but what it will do is sink into the tortilla and into the filling, and as it bakes, it's gonna caramelize just a little more and get thicker and you know much more caramelized if you want to sprinkle just a little bit of uh, extra cinnamon on the top, and I believe I do, let me grab just a little bit, feel free. Make sure you grab cinnamon and not chili powder, like I almost just did. <laughs> okay. I always take those little sifters off my spices. I hate those things. Just going to add just a little cinnamon more. If you want to add some sugar in the raw, or Demera sugar on top. Let me see if I have some, I think I might. Not sure. My little pantry needs to be organized. Maybe I don't, oh well, it's okay. If you have some sugar in the raw and you wanna sprinkle that on top, feel free to do that too. What that will do is that will add a tiny bit of crunch. We're gonna put these in the oven to bake alongside our meatballs. I'm gonna clean up my mess and when I come back, we're gonna get started on the sauce. I'll be back in just a minute. All right, now our meatballs are baking, our enchiladas are baking, and we are gonna get started on our sauce. We're gonna make a homemade tomato sauce, just a very basic, simple tomato sauce. I'm gonna add a little bit of oil to my container here. I've got one onion that I'm gonna chop up. Add 
add that, we're gonna saute our onion first. I love spaghetti. Spaghetti is one of my most favorite things to eat. Italian food is one of my favorite, if not my favorite type of cuisine. I love, 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 love pasta in any way. Cooked any way, baked, you name it. Got that on like medium high heat. I just wanna kinda soften these onions just a little bit. All right, gonna add a little pinch of salt and pepper, maybe half a teaspoon or so. All right, we're just gonna saute these onions up just a little bit. You could add a pepper to this if you wanted. I, I don't want to, I want this just to be a, a, a basic marinara is what we're doing. I like making my homemade sauces. Okay. To that, we are gonna add some garlic. I'm just using the pre-minced up garlic. I find it quick and easy. A little teaspoon or so is, is e equal mm, to a clove or two of garlic. Use as much or as little as you want. I like to add that in with the onions to kind of, oh, you smell that garlic and it's just an instant, mm, you can tell dinner's cooking. This is one of those sauces, if you don't use it all, it also freezes beautifully. Put it in a container, a freezable container, a Ziploc bag, if you want to, you know, lay it flat, you squeeze out the air, and then they lay flat in your freezer. That's a great way to freeze extra sauces and soups and things like that because it doesn't take up any space. I'm also going to add some Italian herbs, just Italian seasoning blend. I always like to put it in my hand and kind of take my hand and crush it. About a tablespoon or so, tablespoon and a half. Not an exact science. You just can do however much you want. But I always do like to put my dried herbs, as you know, in my pan before I add my liquids so that it blossoms, the, the sauces blossom. I'm going to add one 28-ounce can of crushed tomatoes. I like the no salt added ones. That way I can control. And then one, this is a 15 ounce can of tomato sauce. Okay. And that's all there is to that for the moment. We're just gonna kind of turn that down to simmer. We're gonna let that get those flavors, marry each other, if you will, get familiar with each other and blend. The onions are gonna to continue to soften in the sauce and make it absolutely delicious. And that's all there is to the sauce. We're gonna drop our pasta in our water in just a few minutes. We're gonna let that go for about 10 minutes and we're gonna take a quick break, clean up. Oh, forgot one more ingredient. Gotta take a little bit of that acidity off of those tomatoes. So I like to add maybe a teaspoon of sugar because that does kind of take that acidity off of those tomatoes. And if you notice, most pasta sauces will have just a touch of sugar in them because it does, it takes that acidity and cuts it just a little bit. All right, now we're gonna let that simmer for just a few minutes and clean up and when I come back, we'll finish up this pasta. Our apple enchiladas should be done and then we will start on our onion croissant rolls. We'll be back in just a minute. Alrighty, now everything is cooking and we're gonna get started on the bread. Just gonna stir my pasta sauce here. I've got it on low. 
I did add my spaghetti to the water, the boiling salted water, and don't add my salt till after the pasta or the water comes to a boil. Make sure that you kind of go in every couple of minutes and stir it up. It avoids those clumps if you, because it will clump together. Don't add oil to your water. I know a lot of people say add oil to the water to keep it from sticking together. Number one, that doesn't work. And what that does do is um, coat the pasta and the sauce won't stick. It becomes like an oil slick. If you'll just stir it and give it plenty of room, it won't stick together. That's going to cook in about another five minutes or so. I'm going to turn that down. Now, what I have are two packages of the, you buy them in the dairy section with the biscuits and stuff, the croissant rolls. I don't like to, I like to use a knife to kind of separate them into the triangles. So I just use my knife and I separate them into the triangles. I think those little perforations sometimes, they just don't work, I don't think. I prefer to do it this way. All right, you can do them, you get them all ready. I've got one tray done here, I did do that ahead because I didn't think you wanted to watch me do two full trays. But this is a very easy to make and delicious little bread. All right, I have in here one can, a small can of those French fried onions that I crushed up really fine. And I'm gonna take them and I'm just gonna kinda spread them lightly inside my little croissant. Okay, I've got two baking sheets, because you want to give them room, they're going to grow as they bake. I've got two baking sheets lined with non-stick foil. This would be a good job for your kids to do. All right, add as much or as little as you like. You could add some pepper to it if you wanted. I would not add any salt. Those are plenty salty enough. And then roll them up, fat side to the short side, and kind of curve them around just like this, okay? And then place them on your baking sheet, a couple of inches apart, okay? I love these things. Oh, I love them with so many dishes. They're delicious, okay? A couple more. I'm doing two um, of the tubes because we'll eat them. They won't last. All right. Now, what I want to do is gather up my mess. I've got in this container one egg and some water, and I'm just going to lightly beat that egg. I am going to add just a touch of pepper to my egg mixture. Okay. Then I have here a brush, a pastry brush. I'm just going to lightly brush the tops of these with my beaten egg. That's going to do two things. It's going to help the croissants to brown, the protein in the egg, but it's also going to act as a glue for what I'm going to do next. So we're just going to brush this over the top. Let me get that one down here a little closer. Okay. You could use a little bit of uh, cream if you wanted to do that to brush on top. If you don't have an egg, you've got milk. Most people always have eggs in their house. And then I like to take, if you have any left over, take some and sprinkle over top, just a little bit of extra crunch. If you wanted to add some poppy seeds, that would be really good on this too. Or that um, in the spice blends, you can uh, find the everything but the bagel type spice blend. That would be really good on top of these too. Oh, did I? I don't think I got that one. He doesn't look coated. Sorry, fella, didn't mean to leave you out. 
Okay, these need to bake for about 15 minutes. And they will be golden and delicious and absolutely yummy. Now our meatballs have been baking for about 20 minutes. I'm going to take them off the tray and just drop them in the sauce to finish cooking. They will finish cooking, but they're also going to add some of their flavor to the sauce. And it will be so very, very good. Just drop them in there. And you see the grease that has dripped down on the pan? That's not in your sauce now. So it really does cut down on the fat content. Oh, doesn't that look good? Yummy, yummy, yummy. All righty, now our meatballs have been simmering in the sauce. Our pasta is done. I'm going to add just a little bit of shredded cheese. This is a uh, mozzarella and Parmesan blend that I found at the store. Thought it looked interesting. I like to add a little bit of cheese to my pasta sauce. And of course, you can top it with some more cheese. Now, you could at this point pour the pasta in here if that's how you like it. I personally just prefer to put my pasta in the bottom of my bowl. Let me just get that out of there. Hang on just a minute. I love this little thing because it drains that pasta right out of there. there water. So you can put a little pasta or a lot of pasta, depending on how hungry you are. Back in there, noodle. All right, and then take some of your sauce with some of those meatballs and put that on top of your spaghetti. Whew. Stringy cheese, not a problem. And top it with some grated Parmesan or some more of your mozzarella Parmesan blend, whatever you like. You could also combine this, put it in a baking dish, top it with some cheese, and then put it in the oven to melt that cheese for just maybe five minutes or so. You could do it that way too. Whatever and however you want it. But there you go, a very quick, easy, and delicious pasta dish. Here are our croissants that are done. Okay, you see how that egg wash just kind of got them really golden and delicious. And I would serve these alongside the uh, pasta. Pan's still hot. And then our wonderful apple enchiladas. You could serve this with ice cream on their own, whipped cream, however you wanted to serve them. They're still very, very, very hot. Let's see if we can get one out of there. All righty. <clears throat> Just get you a spatula of some sort and then a spoon because you for sure want to get some of that sauce out of the bottom. Remember the glaze that we made? Spoon that over top. You could sprinkle that with a little powdered sugar, or you could serve it with some ice cream, whatever you wanted to serve. And again, you could mix that, do that with any flavor pie filling that you want to do. They have blueberry, they have peach, they have cherry, they have all kinds of different 
pie fillings and you could do whatever you wanted to do with those. You could also do some chopped up strawberries and maybe mix it with some of that glaze that you can buy and then do the very same thing with strawberries. It's up to your imagination what you want to do. But there's a couple of quick and easy meals for or dishes for you to try any night of the week. Start to finish, you could have dinner on the table in under an hour. There you go. I would serve that maybe with a green salad and call it done. Thank you for joining with me. Until next time, I will, you keep cooking and I'll see you on Everyday Manna. Thank you for watching Everyday Mana with Lisa. This program is made possible by viewers like you. Your support is continually needed to keep Christian programming on the air. Please send your best financial gift to Living Faith Television in care of Everyday Mana, P.O. Box 1867, Abingdon, Virginia, 24212.